Well, welcome back to the channel. My name is Cassie, and I am, as I always say, the master pine behind all of the epic bakes. Um, thanks for joining me in my kitchen and allowing me to bake your day my way. Um, today, I'm going to be baking a classic pound cake. A classic pound cake. I stress that. A classic pound cake. Um, this is the original classic because there are so many modified versions where people use um, milk. Um, they don't actually weigh out the sugar, the butter, the eggs, or the flour. They just go by the cups, like three cups of sugar, three cups of flour, and they'll say five to six eggs, and you know, two or three sticks of butter. Or they'll just do the pound of butter, which is four sticks, right? So I, as you can see in the in the intro, I actually weighed everything for accuracy purposes. Um, this is considered to be the old fashioned uh, classic pound cake. And you have to start with your um, unsalted butter is what I use. If you would like to use salted butter, you can. But remember, if, if you want to modify it and you want to add salt to yours, if you're a person who just can't cook anything without salt, you use unsalted butter and then add the salt. But of course, you know, I'm not adding salt. I use the unsalted butter. And you're gonna need a pound. And of course, each stick of butter is um, going to be a half a cup. And so four sticks will be two cups. And as you see, when I weighed it, four sticks um, is gonna be a pound. So you're going to transfer the butter that you allowed to come to room temperature to your um, mixing bowl. And I just rub it across the blade to make sure I get all my butter off it. And then you want to add your pound of sugar to the mixing bowl. Now the next step is that we're going to cream our sugar and our butter. Now with the classic pound cake, seeing that it does not have a liquid base, it does not have milk or whipping cream or half and half, it doesn't have it. All you have is the butter, the sugar, and the eggs, and then you add the flour. So when you cream the butter and sugar, and this step is very, very important that you make sure you cream it. It needs to be the consistency, as I always say, of ice cream. So I'm going to turn on the blender at first. Well, I guess the first thing I need to do is plug it up. Alright, so let me plug the, bit, the blender in. I'm going to turn it on and I'm going to just stir it and just allow everything to get uh, incorporated together. This is just the butter and the sugar. And then I'm going to increase the speed on the blender. And you have to cream the butter and the sugar between eight and 10 minutes, no longer than 10 minutes, right? So while this is creaming, I'm gonna place you on a brief pause. And when it's ready to add the next ingredient, which is gonna be a pound of eggs, one at a time, I will bring you back into the video. The time is up. The butter and the sugar is cream and it's creamed very well. Um, as I always tell you, you want to make sure that it looks like um, ice cream. That's the concept that I go with, as you can see. And I did stop halfway through and I um, scraped down the sides of the bowl and also folded it from the bottom to the top to make sure that all of my sugar and all of my butter uh, was well incorporated together and that it um, creamed. Now in this case, this is a very important step. It's an important step in every cake, but especially in this one. Okay, the next thing you want to do is you want to add um, your pound of eggs and you're going to add them one at a time. I'm just going to place the blender on stir and I'm going to add them one at a time. Now, I have eight eggs and which I weighed and that made a pound. 
you may have six, you may have seven, you may have five, um, you may have some eggs that are double yolk, of course they're gonna weigh more. So everything depends on the size and the type of eggs that you purchase. Um, if you have medium eggs, if you have large eggs, it makes a difference. So that's why I weigh them. So I actually have eight eggs and I just place them in and allow the yolk to break. And as soon as the yolk breaks, you can add your next egg. Because here I'm just simply stirring and getting the eggs introduced into my batter. Straight down the sides and fold it from the bottom to the top. Because you want to make sure that all of the eggs. Um, are well incorporated into the mix. You don't want them to separate out. You don't want yellow streaks. I'm just going to turn it off. And I'm going to add some of the flour 
It's not not all of it. And again, I'm just going to stir it at this point because I just want everything to become incorporated together. And once I get all the flour added into it, I'm going to let it um, uh, get a really good beat, a really good mix. Uh, and then it'll be ready to go in the oven. So I'm going to go ahead and set my oven temperature here. So I'm going to bake it on 325 degrees Fahrenheit. And this one, the bake is going to be roughly anywhere from an hour to an hour and 15 minutes. Now, because we're using a lower temperature and it's not a cold oven, it's gonna be preheated oven, but you need to check your oven temperature and check the cake in your oven after an hour, check it in five minute increments um, to make sure that it is um, done and that it's not over baked. So I'm gonna add a little more of the flour. So roughly about a cup at a time of the flour until I get it all incorporated together. As you guys know, I use white lily all-purpose flour. And you notice in this recipe, there is no baking powder and there's no baking soda because the leavening agent is going to be the eggs. And that's why it was very important to make sure that when you cream your um, butter and sugar, that you creamed it very well, that you didn't have any crystals of the sugar left where you could actually see it. And also, when you add the eggs in, um, that you folded them in very well. because they are going to be your leavening uh, agent in this bake. All right, so that's the remaining of our flour. fold it from the bottom to the top and just making sure that everything is well incorporated. I don't have any flour that settled out. I don't have any uh, yellow streaks which shows that the eggs were not um, mixed in well. And I scrape the sides and make sure that everything um, gets mixed in. So scrape the sides, fold from bottom to top, and then also mix it in really well. So now I'm going to go ahead and add my extract. I'm going to add uh, one teaspoon of my cake batter. And I'm going to add one teaspoon of my Watkins vanilla.
I just turn it on and allow everything to get um, just introduced to each other because um, this is my, my um, extracts. And then I also will scrape the sides because I don't want them to cling to the sides in this one. Especially the cake batter. Right. So now I'm going to increase my speed and I'm going to let this be. And then I'm going to go ahead and grease my baking pan that I've, I've already um, taken out. I'm just going to spray it with my uh, butter spray. You have flour that's not well mixed. That's the whole uh, objective. So now I'm going to again scrape the sides, fold from the bottom to the top. Because if you have anything that settles out, you just going to be on the sides or it's going to be at the bottom. Okay. So now I can transfer this to my baking pan, and as usual, I just go around and around the pan. And then when it seems like it doesn't want to flow, I just break down the sides and just give it a little bit of, of assistance. So now I'm just gonna make sure everything is level. Now this, this batter is not runny and loose like your normal cake batter. So you kind of have to take your spatula and just go around the top and just make sure that it's um, flush, everything's level. Then you're going to um, do the same thing. You have to tap them to make sure you remove the air bubbles, as with any bake. Pretty good on the mix here. Right. And I kind of shake it around 
and that kind of helps to make sure that everything is level as well right so now I'm gonna place the cake in the oven and I'm gonna place it in the center on the bottom rack And again, I'm baking it at 325 degrees Fahrenheit. And the, the time for the bake um, is about an hour to an hour and 15 minutes in a preheated oven. And again, that time varies from oven to oven. So after an hour, check and make sure um, that your cake's not done. And if it needs more baking time, then you need to place it back in and check it in five minute increments. And when you pull it out to check it, I use a kebab stick, but you can use a toothpick, you can use a fork, you can use whatever it is that you normally use. I like the kebab sticks. You just pull it in and you can actually pull it out. I don't have to have the little toothpick, you know, when you pull it in. I can, and it get lost in the cake. I can just use this. So if it comes out uh, with, like, really, really clean, then it's some, it, we consider it, like, to be overbaked. Um, you want a little bit of the crumbs to be on it crumbs where it shows that it's fluffy and moist but if it comes out and it's actually sticking to it of course you know that it's not done you need to let it continue to bake right so while this is baking I'm going to place you on a brief pause and I will pick you back up when it is time uh, to remove the cake from the oven okay everyone it's time to remove the cake from the oven And of course you want to test it. And I, I... And the stick comes out clean. So the cake is ready. So now I'm going to um, just place it on the rack and let it cool for about 10 minutes. And then I'm gonna release it from the pan. See how beautiful? So we'll let it cool and then we'll remove it from the pan. So I'll bring you back when it's time to uh, release it. Okay, everyone, I have released the cake from the pan and this is what the final product looks like. This again is just your classic pound cake. And I also made a lemon glaze to put over it. It's just two cups of confectionate sugar and then I added four tablespoons of fresh squeezed lemon juice. And I also put in a teaspoon of lemon extract. So this is just your classic pound cake, just a traditional pound cake. And I'm gonna place a lemon glaze over it. So I'm gonna let it um, cool just a little bit longer. And then I will add the glaze. Okay, bakers and bakerettes, here is the final product of the Lemon Glazed Classic Pound Cake. I would say it's another epic bake. Thank you guys for coming along with me on this bake. I gladly appreciate you. I appreciate all my subscribers, all the ones who are non-subscribers who stop by and watch the videos i appreciate you as well and we hope that you would subscribe and join us on all of our epic bakes always remember to be kind to yourself be kind to others be positive pass positive vibes carry a positive smile a positive attitude encourage enlighten inspire and motivate yourself and do the same to others Uplift everyone on a daily basis as we treasure through all of the things that are occurring in our present time. Thanks again for coming along with me on this epic bake. I will see you on the next bake. No bake, prep, cook, DIY, apothecary. Have a wonderful Wednesday.